Hello, my name's Jack and this is Life in Motion and welcome to my Porsche 718 Cayman GTS review. In this video, I'm going to go around the outside, the inside, go for a drive and talk performance in the hope that I can answer how good this car really is. This is actually the two and a half litre Cayman rather than the current four litre version. So I'm going to concentrate a little bit more about the usability of this turbocharged car. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe to see plenty of future videos to come. But for now, let's jump in. So yes, the Porsche 718 Cayman GTS. This car is actually the two and a half litre version as opposed to the current four litre version. Now, I've had a couple of Porsche Caymans now and I've had the turbocharged variants. When I was upgrading to this car, I was excited to find out if the two and a half litre is what I hoped it would be. So let's start with the outside. I've gone for Porsche's Miami Blue. It's one of the brightest colours you can get in the range and I absolutely love it. I mean, what do you think? Comment below what you think of the colour. I think it's fantastic. Being a GTS, you've got a couple of different design cues to the car. Out the front, you've got a different design of the splitter. It looks more aggressive. You can see there's more air intakes there and more exposed radiators. You've got Porsche Dynamic Light System Plus or PDLS Plus. That gives you a automatic beam and also the four spotlights you see. As you move down to the side of the car, you've got the 20 inch Carrera S alloys and to denote the GTS, red brake calipers. If you get a Cayman S, you also get the red calipers. You've got GTS on the door. And as we move further back, the black air intake. And let's check out the back. Being the GTS, this car has the Porsche Active Suspension Management and this car has the Sports Suspension. What that means is a 20 mil drop in the ride height. Now the base came in, I thought was a little bit high. When I had my car for a couple of years, I always thought it could do with being a little bit lower. This car having a 20 mil drop, I think is pretty spot on. If you look at the GT4 models, they're even lower and yeah, they look awesome too. But this car looks great, especially with these black 20 inch alloys. But at the back, what have we got? A retractable spoiler. Now, normally I wouldn't park upwards, but you know, it just looks pretty cool. You've got sensors around the back and I've also got them at the front. You've got a different splitter at the back with the central sports tips at the back. Now this car does also have the sports exhaust. So there's a little valve and makes it a little bit louder but you're gonna hear that later on. So, on the outside, what do we think? Well, in my opinion, thumbs up. I think it looks great. There are a lot of sports cars out there. Toyota Supra, BMW Z4. Uh, there's Nissan, there is Audi, there's Jaguar. There's so many different cars out there. And so there's a lot of competition, but I think the Porsche has a lovely line to it. It's got the 911 silhouette, but it's still very sporty. It's still, nice and soft. It's got a really nice balance to it. But I think it's time to look inside the Porsche 718 Cayman GTS. So, what do we think stepping in to the Porsche 718 Cayman GTS? Well, this car has the GTS interior pack. What that does is give you a lot of different options that you ideally have if you were specking up the car yourself. Things like the Alcantara steering wheel, full leather dash, and carbon fiber inlays. The GTS also has these Alcantara centerpieces to the leather seats with the GTS embossed logo. Sitting here, just feels superb. These sports seats are really hugging. They're really comfortable. They are two-way electric on this car, so the back goes forward and backwards, but I think you can get the 18-way electric seats if you'd like to. Looking ahead of you, you have got the crayon-colored GTS rev counter. You've got speedo on the left, and you have a digital display on your right. The digital display on the right gives you things like media, navigation, and different car settings. Below that, we have a multi-function steering wheel, and I wouldn't live without one. It's got things like answering and ending calls, volume, and also going through the media display. Below that, this car has Sports Chrono. 
What that gives you is this little toggle down here to change the different sport modes between sport, sport plus and individual. The sports chrono also gives you a center clock there, which is quite a nice addition. And as an added bonus with a PDK, Porsche's automatic transmission, you get a little button there. That's called sport response. It sets the car up in the best possible position to make sure you get as much speed as possible. In my life, I use that if I'm overtaking. I press that little button, the gears drop down, the revs blip up, and I floor it past the car I'm overtaking. Moving over to the middle, we have a central touchscreen, which is okay, it's not too bad. It is perhaps a little bit dated than other cars in the market, but if I'm honest, I plug my phone in using CarPlay. Now I have an Apple iPhone, so I use Apple CarPlay, and it works perfectly for me. My media, my navigation, and my calls. Below that, we have the automatic climate control. We've got heated seats. And as we move further down, we have buttons for the Porsche Active Suspension Management, I mentioned that earlier, and the Sports Exhaust. Now, if I'm honest, when I'm driving every day, I press that Sports Exhaust button straight away. I really like the sound of this car. I want it to be right there in my ear. So press that little button. Now, it's not a miracle worker. It doesn't make it incredibly loud, but it just gives you a little bit more sound in the cabin. But if you're cruising on the motorway, you can turn it off and it's a little bit less droney. As we move over to the passenger side, we have more carbon inlays. We have a glove box coated in Alcantara. It looks fantastic. The glove box is absolutely fine for size. You've also got a USB socket there if you want to plug your passenger phone in as well. And moving to the doors, you've got more Alcantara, more carbon fibre inlays and a Bose surround sound system. It's obviously up from the standard base system and it's great. Yeah, it works really well. Um, obviously, more CDs play a little bit better than if you plug your phone in. But you know what? It sounds great. So we've gone around the outside. We've gone around the inside. And now I think it's time to get this car out on the road and see what it's like on the move. Let's go. Welcome inside the Porsche 718 Cayman GTS. This car has a two and a half litre turbocharged engine producing 365 brake horsepower. With PDK and launch control, this car goes from 0 to 60 in 4.1 seconds up to a top speed of 180 miles an hour. Porsche 718 Cayman GTS weighs 1,405 kilograms. That means that it feels super light and super nimble through the turns. Oh, the Porsche Cayman has a limited slip differential, which means that back end just tends to slide out a little bit, but in a nice playful way. Now, if you go for the base car, you won't have a limited slip differential, so it won't feel quite as agile or playful as this car does. The GTS comes with a sports exhaust, and it sounds glorious. Oh, oh this car. The PDK is such a quick and nimble gearbox. It is instantaneous through the changes. Oh, brakes are fantastic too. Oh. Let's just slow it down and talk about this car, Round Town. Round Town, the GTS is actually quite quiet. When you put it in normal mode and you turn the sports exhaust off, it's very sedate, it's very quiet, it's very comfortable. With the Porsche Active Suspension Management turned on, it can be quite bumpy, but obviously it stiffens up suspension, so it's designed for going a bit quick around corners and give you a little bit more feel. You wouldn't drive around with the PASM on all the time. But yes, the sports exhaust, it's got a little valve in the exhaust and it makes the car obviously louder. Now, driving around town here, I've got it on now, and what do you think? I know I'm not revving hard, but it's pretty quiet. Now, obviously, the 4-litre version today is going to be a lot louder, but, again, usability-wise, 
round towel, this is spot on. It doesn't feel too cumbersome, too big. The view, view isn't too bad. The blind spots aren't great. But then again, you've got mirrors and you've got the mirrors there, so it's absolutely fine. Now, what I'm going to do is turn PASM on, put it into sport mode, and put my foot down. Now the Cayman has quite renownedly been a fantastic sports car, perhaps the best in its class. And well, where I'm sitting, it absolutely feels it. It feels nimble, it feels light, it feels agile, but it doesn't feel stiff and quite aggressive. It feels very supple, it feels very playful. Sometimes you see things like the Audi TTRS, which with 400 horsepower is quite a beast. But in this car, it just feels more playful than that car. I haven't driven that car. I haven't actually got a review on my channel, but I'd love to at some point. But yes, this car just feels much more agile. So I'd just like to demonstrate what this car does with its PDK and Sports Chrono. Let's do a launch control. Good. Now I did slide a bit there at the beginning. That was with launch control. So I put my left foot on the brake. I plant my right foot. When it goes launch control active, I then take my foot off the brake and it flies. Now this car did kind of get a bit slippery there. And basically I think down to the limited slip differential. And perhaps my tyres are a little bit older. They've got about four mil treads. So it's not like they're bald. But yeah, it uh, was struggling for a bit of grip there. But oh down one more oh there we go did you hear that bang come on baby so some people don't like the sound of these cars and yes when it came out in 2016 there was quite an uproar saying how could you put a turbocharged engine in the Cayman when it's always been naturally aspirated now from my perspective it was a dream I have used these cars as daily drivers and the turbocharged cars are just brilliant. However, yes I admit it doesn't sound quite as good, but I don't think it's fair to say it doesn't sound good. I think it sounds great. The other thing to note is that I will be doing a video very soon on this car and I'll look at the sound of it. So make sure to keep subscribed to see what that sounds like. Oh, hello. <laughs> Nearly got you. Nearly got you. Now I will do a video soon on how this compares to the base model and really, is it worth the extra money? But just to give you a glimpse, the base car has 300 horsepower and goes from 0 to 60 with PDK and Sports Chrono in around 4.7 seconds. That means this car is around 0.6 per second quicker with a 65 brake horsepower increase. Is the 15, 20, 30,000 pounds more on cost worth it? It's gonna be down to you. Personally, I'm not sure. Now, I love this car. I think it's fantastic and it's absolutely suited my needs. But is it worth the money? It could be tricky. Now, speaking to people in the finance industry around cars and depreciation and guarantee future values and residual values, the GTS is absolutely the one to go for. It's probably gonna be holding the most amount of value. But is that worth you buying it? I'm not sure. Now just a bit of insight, I've been driving for about half an hour now and if I'm honest I've been driving pretty quick within the speed limit but I've been accelerating pretty harshly and I've had it in sports mode. It has done about 20.9 miles per gallon but you know I'm driving pretty harsh. As I said 28, 29, even 30 plus on the motorway, you'll absolutely see. But you know what? I think it's time just to pull up and have a quick chat before I end the video. So that is it. That has been my Porsche 718 Cayman GTS review. 
I absolutely love this car. Of course I would, I wouldn't have bought it otherwise, but for you all watching, what do you think? Well, if I'm trying to be balanced, I think it's a superb sports car that probably needs an update. I have no doubt that Porsche are hard at work creating the new Cayman. I'm looking forward to it. Yes, I think it probably will be electric, looking at a lot of the different sports cars and race cars they've got coming out at the moment. But for right now, if you're looking to spend around 50 or 60,000 pounds on a sports car, you wouldn't go wrong with a Porsche 718 Cayman GTS. If you're using it every day, I think the two and a half litre is a great option to go for. But if it's more of a Sunday cruiser, the four litre is probably the one to get. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for plenty more future videos to come. But for now, I'll see you all soon.